When defining a character, an author has an array of available tools to write with. Characters are made specific through qualities, like their goals, actions, manner of speech, and appearance. Wes Anderson's Rushmore is a terrific example of using wardrobe to reinforce not only the nature of a character, but also the character's growth and progress throughout the story. The development and state of character of protagonist Max Fisher, played by Jason Schwartzman, is demonstrated in three distinct stages, each represented by an outfit worn in the film's three main movements. Max's first outfit is a modified version of the school uniform of the private and prestigious Rushmore Academy, which Max attends. Max takes great pride in his enrollment at Rushmore and considers it to be a status symbol. Since his father is a barber of very modest income, Max is only able to attend the expensive school because he was granted a scholarship to the academy. He is keenly aware that he's the poor kid at school, so he does everything he can to appear to be one of the privileged elite who also attend the school. He pretends to come from a wealthy family, telling everyone that his father is a neurosurgeon instead of a barber. Look, I may not be rich, Mr. Bloom. My father may only be a doctor, but we manage. He wears not only the school's uniform, which all other students are seen to wear, but he also makes a few personal additions. Lest the other students notice a red herring in his assertions of social status, Max covers his tracks and his neck appropriately. He wears a red and black striped necktie, when all others more casually wear their shirts unbuttoned. Max is also the only student who wears a navy blue sports coat, which bears an intricate and noticeable R signia. The golden insignia buttons on his jacket sleeve are also a significant addition in that they increase the level of formality of his uniform. After a period of poor academic performance and questionable behavior, Max is eventually expelled from Rushmore. He is forced to attend Grover Cleveland, the local public high school. Notably, during his first month at Grover Cleveland, Max continues to wear his complete Rushmore uniform complete with personal additions of red necktie and navy blue jacket. He is depicted as unwilling to accept his set of circumstances, living with intense inner deceit and self-denial. He continues to pretend that he is a member of the wealthy elite, but that act doesn't seem to help much at Grover Cleveland. The realities of his life eventually catch up to him, and Max enters a period of depression. He continues his damaging patterns of manipulating others for personal benefit. Eventually, his mistreated friends drop him and move on, and a very defeated Max drops out of Grover Cleveland to work with his father as a barber. Again, the audience can perceive the state of his character through the clothes he wears during this stage of grief, pain, damaged friendships, and eventual remorse. He wears his father's old wool hat with earmuffs, an out-of-style brown, orange, and yellow jacket, and a barber's shirt. This is Max's period of hollow defeat. His days of high hopes and unchecked ambition are long gone. Max, I like being a barber. I'm good at it, but I always thought you'd try another line of work. You talked about being a senator or a diplomat. Pipe dreams, Dad. I'm a barber, son. Incidentally, the barbershop pole with its red and white stripes is a symbol which originated in Old England when barbers also acted as surgeons. Don't worry, Mr. Bloom. It's a relatively painless procedure. Maybe we'll throw in a shave as well. The white stripes represent the bandages that the surgeon or barber wrapped the patient in after bloodletting. Though his father isn't a surgeon, like Max used to claim, he does provide an atmosphere of healing during this period of grief in his son's life, and the barber shop becomes the center of that, an emotional hospital, if you will. As Max awaits the healing of his wounds, self-inflicted by his own behavior, he mourns in a November brown. In the third and final stage of the movie, Max meets again with once friend, Mr. Bloom. He is clothed in a beautiful green tuxedo, a red corduroy beret atop slicked-backed hair, and a yellow shirt and bow tie. Max extends Mr. Bloom a gift as a peace offering, and continues to make reparations with the other people he had previously harmed. As the movie concludes, we watch Max come to peace with himself. He has focused his unique talents and personality quirks into healthy, productive actions, rather than the selfish and often damaging efforts from the first act of the film. We see him repair relationship after relationship, seeking forgiveness from the people he offended and liberally offering his own forgiveness to the people who had wronged him in the past. He writes a play in honor of his two closest friends, Mr. Bloom and Miss Rosemary Cross, in which he casts many of his friends, including even his former enemy, Magnus the Scot. The significance of Max wearing the color green is noteworthy. Green represents a type of harmony with the natural world and laws of nature. 
It represents health and sustainability. Max's shirt and bow tie are yellow, which show his playful and optimistic nature, as well as his knack for showmanship. Max is dressed, with a renewed worldview to match, for brighter days to come. We see through his choices in clothing that Max has matured and has left behind the formerly pretentious young man who is reckless in his ambition and heavy in self-denial. Instead, the audience sees a well-balanced, healthy member of society dressed in green with well-kempt hair. His fabric of choice, heavy upholstery grade velvet denotes not only a strong sense of personal style, but also a preference for stability and durability. And perhaps most importantly, we see Max accept himself for who he is. Gone are the brass button days of Rushmore, buttons which never could show his reflection no matter how often he polished them. He still chooses to present a very formal self-image, which hints at part of Max's personality that probably drew him to Rushmore in the first place. But this time, his formality reflects his personality and style rather than a supposed societal norm for a social status description which he doesn't fit and probably wouldn't enjoy being a member of. A picture is worth a thousand words. Conscientious costume design, which closely mirrors Max's worldview and progression throughout the film, adds a welcome and effective visual supplement to the viewer's comprehension of his development and maturation as a character throughout the movie.